ready? Okay, tonight I'm gonna to teach you about what I call my six B's, strategy for safe movement and optimal posture. Everyone here has probably heard about my six B's, but I'm gonna kind of go through them and then I'll explain to you what they mean. Uh, so I'm gonna actually, let's see how many of these six B's we can get. So what, we, what I like to do is have you go around and who knows what the six B's are? Scotty, do you remember? Oh, I don't know if I remember. Susie? I, all right, I so I guess I can't, use, I can't use the staff. So, so here, we go. here we go, you're gonna hear it from me. All right, the six B's is, it's a strategy that I have taught, used, made up, created on my own, and that I find in every aspect of my life, it helps me to have better posture, better body mechanics, helps me to do things when, like if I have a, a tweak or a strain, it helps me to do a lot more than I should if I wasn't using really good strategies. So my six Bs, starting at the bottom. bottom. Yay! So the bottom is what is what everyone else refers to as your pelvic floor. So does everybody know where their pelvic floor is and where those muscles are? I know, Scotty, you're gonna have to hear all about this. Okay, our pelvic floor is a set of muscles that actually looks and acts like a sling at the bottom of our, you know, at the, basically the bottom of our trunk. It goes from where our pubic bone is, and this is inside of our pubic bone, to our tailbone, and then side to side in through our, you know, in through our pelvis. And that acts as a support system to help support our organs, support our spine, it actually, it, parts of it attaches to your tailbone and your sacrum, which are extensions of our spine. So we learn how to do Kegels as, you know, women in our, you know, kind of nurturing years, but Kegels are also really helpful for, for men in protecting their spine, but also for like women's health, helping with um, bladder control, continence issues. So that's your bottom. We'll talk more about that. We'll come back to that. So we start at the bottom. Then the next is our belly, okay? When you, and I'll and actually teach you how to do some, some Kegels and how to activate your pelvic, pelvic floor, but when you activate, you start activating your pelvic floor, then you'll actually start to tighten up your, your, your belly. And the strap that goes right underneath our belly button, it's called our transverse abdominis. And there is a lot of evidence to support the, how you time it with the firing of your transverse abdominis and then how it protects your back. So if there's, they've done studies where if there's like a millisecond of a delay in the firing of your stomach muscles when you go to bend and lift, then those people are more susceptible to back injuries. So this is our support system. Again, so we got support system from the bottom, then we got the strap. So when you use back um, braces, that's what it's pretending to be. It's pretending to be your transverse abdominis. And this is really important in helping to protect our lower spine. So you got your bottom, you got your belly, and then we got my favorite, which I call your hips. No? It's six Bs. Oh. <laughs> Bottom, belly, and box. then we no. your right. box. <laughs> so oh, your box. box, my box, and your box is what I refer to as this area between your rib cage and your pelvic bones. So what I like to say is you connect the dots and you have your box. And when you sit, stand, move, whatever it is that you do, if you keep your box open and square, okay, that's the way your box should be. So we get your bottom, your belly, your box. What comes next? Here's a hint. Your back. Shoulder. Blades. Blades! <laughs> bottom, belly, box. Shoulder blades, okay? Shoulder blades. I'll tell you why those are important, okay? Then we've got... We're coming, we're working our way up, and I call the next your bobblehead. <laughs> and your bobblehead is just a cue to make sure your head and neck are relaxed. So we got bottom, belly, box, shoulder blades, bobblehead, and then the sixth B is? Breath. Is breath in breathing. All right, so again, Starting at the bottom, it should be pretty intuitive. Bottom belly box, shoulder blades, bobblehead, breathe. That's like my mantra. Now let me explain to you how they all work. So let's first talk about your your bottom. So I want. So now I'm going to actually have you all touch 
not the bottom that we're talking about, but your buttocks. So I'm gonna teach you how to do a proper pelvic floor activation exercise. So, the way that I teach people how to do this, so it's really important that you fire the proper muscles and not squeeze your butt. The butt tox is not the B that we're including in these six Bs. There's a few Bs that we're not including, that people want to include, but we're not. So your bottom is your pelvic floor. When you, everybody here, raise your hand, or not, if you've ever been taught how to do a Kegel, a Kegel exercise. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so now let's make sure you're doing them correctly. So the way that you, the, basically the way I talk about it is you take your muscles right in between your pubic bone and your tailbone, and you draw them up like an elevator. Like draw it up one floor, draw it up two floors, draw it up three floors. Now I find when I do that, my belly muscle comes in, so you're automatically kicking in the second B. We'll get back to that. Now, make sure you're doing it correctly. Put your hands on your buttocks, please. Touch the bum. Okay. Now, when you do that, okay, and it's, you know, for you, people know is it's the same muscles that you when if you're going to have to stop your, if you're going to the bathroom and you're like, oh, wait, the seat's down. Oops. You ever happen to everybody? And you're like, oops, and you have to stop. Oh, those are the same muscles, okay? So you touch the bum and you do your, your activation, draw it up one, elevator one floor, elevator two floor, elevator three floors. But keep your bum quiet. Shh. So your buttocks should not be clenching or tightening or be part of this whatsoever. Okay? So that's why I have you touch your bum to make sure as you do it, keep your buttocks quiet. Shh. Okay? So now if we draw it up, don't forget you got to let it go too. Okay? So draw your pelvic floor up. Draw the bottom up. Hold it and then release it one, two, three, okay? So it's, it's just as important to tighten it as it is to, to let it go too, because otherwise, these are muscles. You guys can stop touching your bones. <laughs> so otherwise, think of it this way, it's a set of muscles that's holding, you know, basically holding everything up. If you don't learn to let it go, it's the same as tightening up and just keeping it tight all the time, okay? So that's why it's, it's important to not only activate it, but to also know, know how to release it. Okay, so there's your bottom. Any questions about your bottom? Okay, yes ma'am. Do you let the Kegel exercise go as you did, three, two, one? Mm -hmm. You don't just let it go, you do three, two, one. Yeah, no, it's Wait, you yeah. actually have, can men do Kegels? Yeah. Really? They, have, they <laughs> can do yes. Kegels too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, really important for, you know, supporting, yeah. basically supporting your spine. And it supports your organs too. You know, if, you're, if your pelvic floor holds up your bladder, you guys don't have a uterus, so it's one less thing you have to hold up, but it still like, is, is, is really important to hold up your bladder. So bottom, we talked about your belly, your transverse abdominis. Everybody touch your belly. I'm gonna prove to everybody. So we got bottom, belly. Okay, so everyone's touching your belly right below your belly button, right? Okay, I want everybody to cough. <laughs> now hopefully if you've been doing your Kegels, you're okay with that. <laughs> so, all right, you got belly muscles there, right? Okay, so it's not really functional for us to keep coughing all the time. So how I like, you know, so proving that you have those, those belly muscles. So we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but I'm going to have you to connect the breath with your belly. So everybody inhale through your nose. Pucker your lips like you're blowing out a birthday candle. And draw your belly muscles in as you exhale. Use your exhale to activate the belly. Use your belly to keep pushing out the breath. Got it. Inhale through your nose one more time. Fill up your belly. Pucker. Blow. Draw in your belly. Okay. If you want to do another breath, go ahead. So we got bottom, we got belly. All right, we're moving on up. So that's how, how we're, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the breath later, but that's really a really great way how you activate those transverse abdominal muscles, which are super important to protecting your back. All right, now we're going to talk about your box. All right, everybody find their box. Everybody find where your rib cage 
So put your middle finger on your rib cage. Put your thumb on your, no, these aren't your hips, they're actually your ilium bones. So thumb here, middle finger on these bones. So now everybody, when you're sitting in the chair, right, is your box open and square? Or is it all, <laughs> okay? So open up your box, lift it up. So what I like to do is to really think about the, your rib cage right here. You, you've got this thing called the xiphoid process. Pull that up and away from your belly button and really create some space in here. So as we get older, I have a new saying. If you're over 40, five, gravity's not your friend. Gravity's not our friend, ladies. We're all of the age, men, right? Why is gravity not our friend? Because gravity's trying to collapse our box. All right, whether you're sitting, standing. So really fight gravity and open up your box. Keep it open and keep it square. And then guess what? When you do that, what automatically happens? Okay, my belly muscles automatically draw in as I kind of lift up my rib cage. Okay, so everybody kind of, while you're sitting here, fix your boxes. <laughs> okay, All right. fix your boxes by maybe what I what I like to do is just kind of wiggle your rear end back just a little bit in the chair so that you can create an opportunity for some space. So as we grow, a lot of people shrink. You can fight this by really, this is where we shrink from, okay? I will never forget, I was doing an evaluation and this woman's rib cage was literally in contact with these bones. Her box was just completely collapsed. So uh, I've never seen, you know, but it happens. So then this is where we lose our height. So keep your box open and square. Now, as you all were, were kind of opening up and making your boxes square, my belly draws in. The other thing that happens is automatically, I don't know if you guys feel what's happening in your shoulder. They go back. Blades. So it really centers around the box. So why do we want our shoulder blades to be down and back? Anybody? Shoulder. Blades. So we got our bottom, we got our belly, we got our box. And I'm gonna go cut this, the, the pepperoni. I was thinking about this when I was cutting the pepperoni. Okay, I got good posture here. I'll cut the pepperoni. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so, I, so just as for example, so if I was going to activate my shoulder blades, all right, I got my bottom, my belly, my box, my shoulder, Okay, so you're not, and it, it, it works for painting, it works for cooking, um, mixing cookie dough, mixing, we were mixing uh, brownie mix the other day. Are you gonna mix it like this? No, so we're still protecting our spine, but now we're working our way up to our mid back and our neck. So if your shoulder blades aren't drawn down and back, it's gonna hurt, okay? So we got the bottom, we got the belly, we got the box, we got the shoulder blades. Any questions about the shoulder blades? And the shoulder blades take place of the other B. Breath. Yeah. People, people want to include the boobs in the Bs. <laughs> but we really don't need to, because one, it's not super professional. But three, if you do your shoulder blades, well, what automatically happens? So it can go unsaid. You can, you can be there if you want, but it really goes unsaid. But your shoulder, when your shoulder blades activate, yeah, and your box is open, yeah, you're gonna carry yourself and your chest is gonna be lifted. All right, goes to show you how it kinda, in, kinda integrates with body image and how you carry yourself. Um, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you look good. And it, it's a good cycle. So bottom belly box, shoulder blades, bobblehead, and then we finally got the, wait, did we talk about bobblehead? We talk about bobblehead. Okay, bobblehead. Why bobblehead? Oh. Oh. <sighs> All right, so you're doing everything else. You don't, if you can't have your neck be loosey-goosey, then you're jacking it up, okay? You lift up your, so if we walk around like this, if we, give me a phone. Thank you. 
if we're doing this, oh, gravity, not our okay. Hand. Am I are my six B's working here? No. no. So the six B's really help you to so bottom belly box. Oh wait, oh box. Oh yeah, shoulder blades. If I'm doing this, I can't bobble head. So there's yeah. so many rules about posture and body mechanics, but if you just apply these six B's, then your head and neck are in the front row. But if you can be loosey goosey, all right, with anything from just static sitting on your computer, on the phone, cut the pepperoni. No, cut the pepperoni. Do a I do the bobblehead all the time. I'm always doing a check. And if you're doing something that's requiring, that's making you like, Chances are you're not doing your six B's. You know what I mean? Like cutting with scissors, um, you know, baking, cutting, whatever it is. So if you are not doing your bobblehead, then you're probably doing something weird that's going to end up causing pain just because of weird mechanics. Here's your phone back. All right. So bottom belly box, shoulder blades, bobblehead, and. Bringing it back to the breath, okay? So bottom belly back, shoulder blades. So let's do our breath one more time. Inhale through your nose. Pucker your lips like you're gonna blow out a birthday candle or blow through a straw. Okay, then one more time, inhale. Fill up your box full of air. And then draw it in. And then breathe. Excellent. I just want to show you a couple things on how I integrate this into what I do as far as some movement. So I'm going to grab a laundry basket. Excuse me. So, Susie, can you grab me one of those steps over there too? Okay, so if this something is really, you know, I'm going to pick up something from the, I'm actually going to, here, I'm going to pretend that I'm in my daughter's room. <laughs> okay? So, six beats. I'm going to pick up something pretty heavy. Am I going to go like, am I going to do this? No. No, it's horrible. There's no six beat action. So, really centered around the box. So, start with the box. Draw it in. I got my bottom. I got my belly. Right? I got my box. I got my shoulder blades. Why? Because I'm going to pull this in close. Am I going to go like this? No. Shoulder blades, bobble head. And then if you're, especially like moving furniture, doing something heavy, you're not going to be like, ah, ah, ah. Make sure you breathe. Okay? When I put it down, Bottom belly box, shoulder blades, bobble head, breathe, okay? Same thing when I pick something up. So am I gonna go and go like this? No. What's wrong with my box? It's closed. It's been completely destroyed. So, you, so again, there's a million ways to do proper body mechanics, but I'm just gonna keep my box square. You can go down like this. You can go down like this. If I have to squat down for any length of time because there's a lot of stuff on the floor, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna squat down and I'm gonna be like, ooh, wait, bottom belly box, shoulder blades, bobble head, and breathe, okay? When you're cooking, bending, lifting, moving, when we move these tables back, definitely, you know, we'll be working on our six Bs. Mowing the lawn, I've done that a few times. Vacuuming. I've actually done that a few times. It really works. So when you're vacuuming, you know, think about keeping your box square. So you're not doing this. <laughs> Why I don't vacuum it up. You're gonna be like, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. So do your check and shoulder blades, bottle head, breathe, yep. And it really does center around the box. So kind of, if, you're, if you can just take, if there's one takeaway here, Start with the box. So if six things is too much for y'all to remember, just take away, make it all about your box. Any questions? Everybody got their boxes all under control? Yes, Heather.
What if people don't do these things on a daily then basis? Then they end up as our patients. <laughs> and what are some of the things that you could end up in here for? Uh, herniated disc okay. in your low back, Her, um, neck spasms, you know, because, well, it's like, yeah, so, I mean, impairments. actually, how about, you know, yeah, you know, shoulder, because if you're like this, if you're, if you're like this, and you do repeated overhead stuff, then you get your shoulders impinged. Um, you know, 50% of the people that we see in here are low backs. So, I mean, statistically, you're gonna probably end up with a low back issue. You know, how many, how many times have you moved from furniture and then you're like, oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Chances are you didn't activate your six Bs. I mean, how many, we, we did a big move. We're hauling stuff up and down those stairs, you know, the old office, and I'm like, okay, bottom belly box. Shoulder waist, oh, I had to breathe those really heavy boxes that we had to move or something super awkward, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you know, and if you can't maintain those six Bs, then you should be doing it by yourself or you need more help, um, especially keeping the box square. So yeah, so if you're, think about, think about all like the chefs who are cutting like this all the time, all right? You're gonna, your, your, your shoulder and your neck gonna get jacked up. Even sitting in the chair. So here's another takeaway. I'm going to teach you another way that you can keep your box open and square. In the car or in your, in your work chair, do what I call the wiggle back. Everybody wiggle your rear end back in the chair. Do the wiggle back. And then right as soon as you do the wiggle back in the chair, you've already got pretty much 90% of your bees happening there, right? So if you, you know, if you feel like activating your pelvic floor, but your box is square, your shoulder blades should be in a good shape, your head and neck should be relaxed because what this is all ultimately gonna help you with is keeping that plumb line between your ears, your shoulders, and your hips, okay? If you've got your six Bs going on, you're not gonna be doing this, right? You're not gonna be sitting at, you know, if you, you know, you know, sitting at your, you know, sitting at your, with your laptop like this, Oh, it's terrible. Oh, no, keep it open. So that this is a really nice takeaway to do the wiggle back in your car and if you really feel, you know, it really kind of helps keep your six Bs under control when you're, you know, sitting. Remember when you go to stand up, when we kind of teach you how to stand, try to keep your box square when you go to stand up. Instead of standing up like this, oh, down. Okay. How many times do we go from sitting to standing up every day? A lot. Okay, so are we gonna go stand like this? Or are we gonna be like, oh. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Just join my box. Oh, box is open. Okay, so to finish, I'd like everybody to practice standing, keeping their box open and square to conclude our presentation tonight. Oh, yeah. There you go. Any questions, everybody?